Recognize that? Yes, it's the sound of children at play. What a delightful sound. And I bet it's even more delightful when it's your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, or other children that are close to you. Today, we talk to an author, a world traveler, and a grandma about grandparent travel. Thank you for joining us on The Ageless Traveler, dedicated to making lifelong travel easy so you never stop traveling. I'm your host, Adrian Berg, excited to discuss what is now the fastest growing travel trend, grandparent travel. If you've ever been on a trip with children, or you're planning one, or you're timid to try it, meet our guest, Judy Freslin. She's the founder of Rose Garden Childhood Learning Center and author of Where Wisdom Meets Wonder. She'll guide us to fulfilling grandparent travel, and if the parents are standing in your way, she has solutions for that too. So sit back and relax. All the resources we discuss are on our show notes at agelesstraveler.com. And while you're on the site, click the free gifts button to join our Facebook salon and receive our exclusive fun goodies. Her name is Judith Freslin, and she is the author of many books. But this particular book that we're going to be talking about is the relationship and the memoir she has as a grandparent of really young children. We're also going to bring the grandfather in there, Opie, and how they are preparing, you know, almost like creating a garden. In fact, she is the founder of the Rose Garden Childhood Learning Center, and we'll be talking about that a little bit, so she's a real expert when it comes to this. So thank you so much for being with us today, Judy. Thanks for having me, Adrian. All right, so let, let's get started here. You created a memoir. And in the title of that memoir, two beautiful words, wisdom and wonder. And I'm assuming that the wisdom is us and the wonder are the grandkids. How did you come up with the title of the book? Well, one of the things I focus on with aging is not the changes in my skin and my hair color, but the things I'm gaining. And one of them is wisdom. And the only way you gain it is through experience. So I know what I have to bring to the table is wisdom. And with the young children, it's amazing how they look at nature with such wonder. A bird in the tree, Omi, look. And then it stops me and I come into the moment and I engage with wonder with them. So it's a great match. I'm wise enough at this point in my life to know to stop and engage in the wonder that a young child experiences. Well, that's very beautiful. And of course, the book that you've written is a memoir and you do talk about things that happen, vignettes in your life, I'll say, with mm-hmm. your young grandchildren. So let's start by giving us their current ages and how old were they when you wrote the book? Because it's a very recent book. And how did you start? How did you begin? And how do you suggest that grandparents begin to pave the way to be able to travel with them later in life? Yeah, well, I started writing the book when the children were one and a half and two and a half. They're just 19 months apart in age, two little boys. Big and, brother and uh, little brother, right? Big, that's what I call them, yes. exactly. And I I started writing about it at the kitchen table. Each of my books I've written in a different place with a different scenario. And this one I decided after breakfast I would get out a notebook and pen and I would write a story from what had been happening because I was afraid I would lose them if I didn't record them. And then after I wrote several of them, I thought, wait a minute. I've got a book here. (laughs) And so, yeah, it was really that impulse to record it because my husband and I are always talking about their visits after the children have been here and we look forward to the next one. So, yeah. So those are the stories. Well, I want to tell everybody listening that we're going to have a little bit of a YouTube video for you with Judith on how to write a memoir. And we will have many, many resources and experts on how to write, particularly, of course, a travel memoir. So make sure you go to our YouTube and you go to agelesstraveler.com. You'll be able to see all of that if you're interested in doing what Judith has done. Now, let's take a look. Let's pave the way. I have a friend, two friends, actually, my two best friends, take their teens traveling all the time. All the time. It makes your mouth water where they take them. But that is because from the beginning, as with you and your husband, you pave the way for travel with your grandkids. And one of the memoirs in the book, of course, the book is on Amazon. It's on judithfreslin.com. Spell Freslin so everybody can find you. (laughs) R-I-Z-L-E-N. 
Uh, so your book is, 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 is really just a lovely read. And one of the chapters that struck me was about going fishing and how you thought it was such a big deal. And in the end, he wanted to put a stick in the water. So explain to us what you learned. Yeah. What you learned about traveling with kids that way. Absolutely. You have to remain flexible. You know, if the child is interested in fishing, don't have a clear idea of how that looks. Allow them to explore it and find their own way to it. You know, it was still winter here in Buffalo. And, you know, young child doesn't know the difference between this moment and, you know, five months from now. There's a long wait before you can go fishing if you start talking about it in winter. So he wanted to do it right away. So going by the lake, the park near our house, and picking up a stick and sticking it in the water satisfied his need to experience fishing. And then, you know, in the meantime, Adrian, we've taken him out fishing at our little lake house, and he's caught two big fish. He's wow. four now. He That's caught a bass, bass before. A, f- a five-pound bass. It's amazing. We wanted to and you tell did him. probably catch a five-pound bass. <laughs> oh, well, guess what? That's an OP job, taking him out That's fishing. Okay. That's something OP does. Yeah. Well, family and intergenerational travel is so important. And it's trending. There is multicultural travel information out there. And now I just want to take a minute to clue you in on some news you can use about black families traveling. We love family travel and we all want to go back to our roots or see something significant in our history. Now, Martinique Lewis, host of the National Geographic's Black Travel Across America series, offers an app inspired by Green's Negro Motorist Green Book. The app gives travelers one digital resource that collectively lists all things black pertaining to travel. So if you want to take a family vacation, if you want to show your grandkids things about their past, you really need to have this app. And you will find a reference to it in our show notes to this show. Never stop traveling. We're back, and we've been speaking with author Judy Freslin about grandparent travel in general. Now let's get a little bit more specific. I want to bring out another excerpt from Where Wisdom Meets Wonder, 40 Stories of Grandma Love, a beautiful book which Judy has written and you can find on Amazon and at judithfreslin.com. I want to bring out another part of this. The Max Planck Institute, I'm very big on statistics, folks, particularly when it comes to grandparenting, says that 63% of the way we see our own aging, this is significant, has to do with the elders we see in our life, right? So I would like to ask you personally, how do you see yourself as a grandparent? And maybe you could even answer for Opie because they call the Omi an Opie. Uh, so here we go. 63%. How, what does that feel like to you when I say that the kids are going to see their own aging based on what you show them. What do you want to show them? Well, I want to show them my authentic self. Children are the truth tellers. They know if you're putting on a show, if you're pretending. So we are authentic with them. But at the other hand, they're learning through imitation. They don't learn by what we say. They learn by imitating what we do and how we are. So we want to bring out our playful nature They're very playful. We meet them there. We want to pay attention to those small things, the insect on the ground and the things they're interested in. And we also want to be in the present moment. That's where children live. And they bring us into the present moment. So since they are imitating us, yeah, we want to be worthy of that imitation. So we are ourselves, but we are, let's call it our our best selves, (laughs) A, a, a good version of ourselves. And I had remarkable grandparents myself. So I had this picture of aging. Uh, They had such presence and a way of being that that I wanted, that I looked forward to acquiring. I never saw aging as a negative because of grandma and grandpa, really. Now, you, childhood education specialist with Mm Rose Garden, you've seen a lot of parents. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that my listeners are thinking right now, They're not going to let me do it. They're not going to let me take the children, particularly the little ones, by themselves. And then certainly they have a little struggle when they become 10 or 11 or 12 to take them somewhere. Yeah. With all the parents you know, how do you deal with the parents? Well, 
the way I deal with the parents of our grandchildren yeah. is I realized I was not the number one authority in their lives, that we are second tier. So I went to them and said, how can we support you? I asked them and, and I said, what do we need to make you comfortable with us taking the children overnight? And of course, our daughter packed amazing bags every time we go with them overnight with all the equipment. That's what's important. I know you, you need, a, you need an elephant and a truck <laughs> when you go with them. Right? Absolutely. So we allowed her to say what she needed to be comfortable. And then as soon as I, you know, I spent the first 18 months with each child doing some day-to-day daycare, childcare. And so we developed this bond. So you got children. credibility. You, well, the you children, established the credibility. Children, I did. And, and with the children, the parents see the bond. And when the children wake up and say, is it an, an OP day? <laughs> and they really want to spend time with us. The parents, really parents love anybody who loves their children well. And Yes, parents, this generation in particular, they have a lot of things to think about, right? They've, their children are, one grandson was born during a pandemic and, right. you know, we've had bear, bad air quality. There have been things to contend with that can make you nervous. So just, yeah, to listen to the parents, listen to what they have to say and allow them to be just where they are. They're not, I've lived many more years and have a lot more years of experience and I can't expect them to have the benefits of that where they are. I was once the young parent like they are. The hectic, frantic. That's so right. We, yeah, that's so we're right. speaking here with a, a person who obviously brings calm into the world wherever she goes. That's my feeling right through the microphone <laughs> of Judith Fresman. And she, of course, is the author of many books. But her new, her new book really celebrates this unique bond between grandparents and grandkids, Where Wisdom Meets Wonder at JudithFresman.com and, of course, Amazon. Now, before we take a little break, I want to ask you one more question. Something shamed me that you wrote. Made me ashamed. You know what it was? That oh my you goodness. sent postcards. I have been to 110 countries. I never sent one postcard. And I'll tell you why. Because in the early days, there was no computers and there was no cell phones. So I always sent postcards. And I didn't like writing them. And I'd say, because my mother was alive then and I wasn't writing to grandkids, I would say, Mom, I really love it here in Portugal. That that was like the best I could come up with. And that was it. (laughs) So once we had FaceTime and all this, I just gave up on the postcards. But what a brilliant idea you had. It made me ashamed that in the past five years I have not been sending postcards to anybody. But it's great to send it to the kids. I have to admit to you, I use Portugal as an example because it's a great lead-in to our very first Ageless Traveler trip together, and that is in March 2024. Take a listen. Come with us to Portugal, May 2024. You know, my mouth is watering as I read the Colette brochure for May 11th to 24th trip to Portugal and the Azores. I can't wait to revisit Lisbon with you and show you its hidden museums, sip red wine, munch olives, and listen to the Fado music. You know, that's a UNESCO heritage experience, but we're also going to bathe in the beauty of the Azores, pare down volcanic craters, stroll in the Terra Nostra Botanic Park. Now, come travel with us, and if you've got a group of 10 or more, or you're a nonprofit organization, discover the benefits of our group programs at the Ageless Traveler featured trips and group trips. Don't forget, this is the kind of travel that will allow you to never stop traveling. Now we're back with Judy and let's talk to her again about her great travel memories and experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most recently when we were in Germany, my husband's from Southern Germany and we were in the South of France and then visiting family. Our daughter sent a picture of the boys. They're three and four years old looking at a map and pointing to Germany Aww. where Omi and Opie are. So they were just trying to find where, where is this place that they are? So they, that was the sweetest thing to receive. So yeah, yeah they, so they know we're travelers. They, they know we go places and they know we come back. And so we always we... think about them when we're there. And the whole idea about the postcards is wish you were here. And that's really a true sentiment. I wish you were here with us. I wish we could share this with you. 
So, yeah, I, I want to say something here that's kind of profound. The idea that you always come back mm-hmm. is very, very important. Yeah. Sometimes parents only talk about their own parents, us, as frail, sick, or we're perfectly healthy and they'll tell you not to travel. Yeah. I've had ki- yeah. My kids have done that to me. What? Yeah. You're going around the world. You're going to Vietnam. You have low, sh- you know, you have to have low sodium. You'll never be able to eat. I mean, all the pile on and pile why? Because it makes them feel better if you're home in a closet somewhere. They don't have to worry about you. <laughs> it's true. They become protective of us. Don't yes. They? Of course. Yeah. Don't let that yeah. happen to you. No. When we come no. back, we're going to talk about probably the essence of the book and the essence of our lives as grandparents, which is how grandchildren keep us relevant. And also some hints and tips on safety when it comes to young children and traveling with them or going to the beach with them and so on. So don't you guys go anywhere. If you take long trips or travel through different climate zones the way I do, you don't want to schlep a lot of luggage. Well, luggage-free ships to many of the hotels in the world and mostly all the cruise ships. I've been recommending Luggage Free for years to my friends and family, and I always hear the best rave reviews. So you visit atlistraveler.com products and services to access Luggage Free, get all the information, and stop schlepping. Okay, we are back, and this is Adrian Berg, and this is the Atlas Traveler. And we are here with author, but also early childhood uh, expert, Judith Freslin, because she is the founder of Rose Garden Early Childhood Center. So she's seen it all personally. And what she decided to do was to create a personal book, not a professional book for you, on the the wonders and the wisdoms of being with grandkids. You'll find that on Amazon. Let me give you the full title here. And you'll also find it on uh, judasprislin.com. So we're talking about where wisdom meets wonder. Wisdom is us. Yeah, it is. And wonder, of course, is the kids. So first of all, that alone is poetic. Relevancy is the number one issue in the lives of most retirees. Where in your life, because you work, you're a writer and so on, is the relevancy of the grandchildren. What does it mean to you to have grandkids? Yeah, I think they really remind us of how important it is to continue to learn and grow. Think of what they learn in the first few years of life. It's incredible. And they're so persistent and, you know, going from sitting to standing, fall down, get up and fall down again. So it's really important to keep the attitude of a beginner and just to continue to learn and grow and not become brittle and not open, to keep an open mind and heart. I think that's what keeps you relevant. And I don't expect myself to have the same sensibilities they do. They're growing up in a different age. They're coming in with a relationship to technology that I will probably never develop in my lifetime. (laughs) So, you know, it's important to realize we're all learning things. And I just think that staying fresh and always learning is what really keeps you relevant. And, you know, connecting with the young children, watch how they do it. It's amazing. It is amazing. amazing. And, you know, the issue of technology, that is one thing I think grandparents bring to the table. This is what I'm going to say is a little bit unusual. I do have to deal with technology day in and day out. And our Mm -hmm. producers, my husband producer is really a whiz at 76. He could be a 30-year-old, you know, hacker or whatever, but not me. And I like reading books. I like showing books. I like feeling books. I Yes, I like my Amazon and Kindle. By the way, Judith's book is on Amazon, just a hint there. But I really like the tactile feeling and the face-to-face. I think that's one thing grandparents can bring. What's unusual is we're all told that we must know our technology. We're not up to speed. The fact is that that can be a positive. If we do things face-to-face, if we actually use a telephone, heaven forbid, instead of FaceTime once in a while, if we show that we have friends that actually meet, not just meet up, it's impactful for kids because the Surgeon General has made loneliness the number one health issue in the United States. 
And he doesn't mean older people. He means younger people because technology doesn't really teach you interaction. So that's right. something we can bring to the table. We're going to take just a brief pause before we get to the end of our show to tell you once again what we're up to here at The Ageless Traveler. I want to tell you a little bit about the purpose and the origin of The Ageless Traveler. It's a spin-off of my award-winning podcast, Generation Bold, The Fountain of Truth About Aging. My listeners are people who, like you and myself, are at a point in our lives when we want new excitement, new ways to give back to the world, whether we're working or we're retired. I've marshaled the best resources and people to help us do both. Ageless Traveler is not just a podcast or a blog or a Facebook salon. We're a movement for lasting relationship, ways to contribute throughout our lives, and preparedness for the fabulous decades ahead together through world travel. We can make a lasting impact as a community of active travelers and have the time of our lives. People visit Ageless Traveler for many reasons. Join our Facebook salon, get new travel buddies, find out the safest and the best way to travel, get discounts, and read more about the salon by clicking the free gifts button on the website menu and become one of our Ageless Ambassadors so you know exactly how you can contribute and how it contributes back to you. Never stop traveling. And now we're back for a beautiful wrap-up of our show. But I want to go back to the, the idea that of the relevancy and the openness. You said something so beautiful in the book, and that is that children are like tourists, like particularly first-time tourists. They're filled with wonder. What an analogy. How did you come up? What made you think of that? Is it something you saw in the eyes of your grandkids that triggered that thought that children are like tourists in the world? Yeah. Well, it's both. It's my experience as a tourist. I realize when I'm trying to speak a foreign language or I don't know the geography of an area or the cultures, I can be a little bit timid. And then I think about it, of how the children are, they, they're they always experiencing that, aren't they? And I yes. always try to help parents understand why children need our guidance. So one of the analogies I used is that they are like tourists. They need our guidance, and they know how to do many things. They know how to develop their gross motor movement. That's innate. Play is innate. They're good at all those things. But they don't necessarily know how to sit at the table and share a meal with a group. We have, there's a learning curve with that. We have to teach them those things. We have to guide them. This is how we do it. This is how we get in and out of a boat. This is how we stop at the stop sign when you're on your bicycle on the sidewalk before you cross the street, you know, so we need to guide them. And so just so I could relate to what it's like to being a, you know, being a child, being guided, I thought about my experience as traveler, as a traveler. And I love to go to foreign countries where I know somebody who can bring me around, who knows the lay of the land. I feel so much more secure. Or to have a tour guide, like in China, we had a tour guide because we wouldn't have been able to find our way around. So, yeah, so parents often feel hesitant about guiding their child that, you know, that's maybe crossing a line. But I think of it as helping a child. Yes. You know, yes. just like you want help when you're a tourist, the child wants help. How do you do this? these things here? I just got here a couple of years ago. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> you're yes. advancing them. You're constantly advancing them. And it's wonderful yes. to be able to do it when you're older as well. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so now I want to go to something. You know, everybody talks about grandmothers. And by the way, although this is an evergreen show, I have to tell everyone that it is being recorded only a few days after Grandparent Day. There is a Grandparent Day in this country, and it comes the Sunday after Labor Day every single year. So it's appropriate that we're doing this now. But when they think grandparent, they think of grandmother. Let's bring Opie into the picture here. (laughs) Yes, grandfather. (laughs) Now, Mm -hmm. you probably, like with my husband, you probably couldn't do without him. But you mentioned the fishing. You said, oh, that's for, you said right away. Oh, well, that's that's for Opie. So what's for Opie? What is his part in this uh, adventure that you guys are having? 
Well, as far as fishing, I'll go back to that. Um, he used to fish with his father, so that was an experience he had, and I, I didn't have that. I grew up in a family of eight, four boys and four girls, and uh, yeah, I didn't end up going fishing. But Opie is the one. So I, I did the primary child care when they were before they could go to a center, and I had them during the day. But Opie always made sure he came home for lunch. So he'd come home for lunch, and somehow there was a ball in the mix, and it was being kicked around the kitchen, and there was this kind of activity right. going on that I had never brought all morning long. Believe me, the ball wasn't at play. And he'll do some rough housing, and he will, you know, he'll get the excitement level high. And which is really good for them to express. You can't just keep it down low yes. all the time. That's not right for young children. And, you know, he'll make sure sometimes he'll just say, well, I'm going to take off the afternoon and I'll go back to work when they go home and we'll get them to the park and or, you know, pull them in the wagon. They're getting heavy now. So pulling two little boys in the wagon takes yep, his strength. Bet. <laughs> and go to the playground. So he does all that kind of exciting stuff. And then if he leaves and goes back to work, I say, okay, let's do the dishes and pull the shades and prepare for nap time. <laughs> so I'm more, I carry that end. It's, you know, yin and yang. It works. It works really well. But Opie really wants a bond with the children. And he realizes children can only bond with one person at a time. So if they bonded with me after they leave their parents, the, and he walks in the room, they won't have a bond with him. But if I step back and let him lead the activity, they will bond with him. And well, so that, that, I allow yeah. that. It, not only that, I want to bring this out for my solo listeners. I have experienced those who know my other show, Generation Bold, know me. So you know that I lost my father when I was very young. And what my mother did was she brought in another person. In this case, it was an aunt. So I was actually, I had two mommies before it was cool. <laughs> but if you are a solo grandparent and you realize that you have a friend of the same sex, different sex, doesn't matter, you can bring that person in because the, the, the little child is not really relating you. It feels like it as a couple, like one person, just as Judith said. They can bond separately. And each of you has a different skill, particularly when it comes to travel, which is, of course, my focus. And my husband, for example, is we call him the human GPS. I can't find myself on my way out of the ladies' room. But he can <laughs> find you anywhere in the world. So the first thing he did when we went to the zoo was he stopped at the map. You know they yes. have the big maps. I never yes. stop at a map because I can't read a map. <laughs> well, these kids know particularly the five-year-old, where things go, how a map is. And that is really an understanding on a flat surface of a three-dimensional world. And it's really interesting to watch how easily that was learned. But they would never attribute that skill to me. They know who they're bonding with and what that person is doing. So it's really, really wonderful and it's beautiful. For Our time is coming to an end, but we have one really important question I want to ask you. And that is, I want you to imagine that your two big brother and little brother are now 17 years old and you're healthy and around. Where would you want to take them? Well, I think it would depend on their interests, right? If they're learning a language or they have a particular skill they're developing. Like if they're interested in theater, maybe we'd go to London or soccer. We might go to a game in Germany or bicycling in the south of France. And also, they might want to see the places that we've talked about, the stories we've told them. So we want to see what they're interested in. And, and we also want to see if some of the stories we've shared have piqued an interest in them traveling to those places. So it would be really fun to bring them and show them the places they've heard about. So, yes, and you made a good point, Adrian, that, of course, you wanted to be in keeping with your own health and capabilities at the time. So we want to make these trips, you know, Earlier rather than later, we're not going to put it off until they're in their late twenties, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> you know, yeah. so yeah, but we'll definitely take them to Germany before long um, sure. to meet their family yeah. there. Beautiful. So, so I'll t I'll tell you that uh, I use seventeen or fifteen because that's the time when they're so capable of really being on their right. own, and so it's less worry. But I can't wait to be able to take uh, who's five now. Maybe by the time she's seven. 
I, and I'm trying to pave the way. So it was very interesting and very funny to me. She went to a birthday party last week, and there was a, a lamp, Aladdin's lamp. And the mother said, oh, that's from Morocco. And as if, you know, the child had never heard of Morocco, <laughs> such a fantastic. <laughs> and she said, oh, I like that lamp. When my grandma goes to Morocco next time, she'll pick one up for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> great. It was so nothing to her because I was there in March. So I picked up a dress for her. I should have picked one up for me. I love that. That's the stuff I love. Yeah. They vicariously experience these things through us, you know, and they start to develop an imagination about these places. So it's really fun to then fulfill it with the actual experience. It's so beautiful. So to wrap up, we are speaking with Judith Freslin. She is an expert in early childhood education. She is an author of many books. We'll be speaking about those books on the air, on our YouTube and our video channel, where wisdom meets wonder, 40 beautiful stories. I added beautiful to your title. It's where wisdom meets wonder, 40 stories of grandma love. And there's grandpa all over the place in there too, by the way. And it's really heartwarming. It's inspiration. You can hear just from Judith's voice how much love she brings into the world and to her family. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Adrian. It was my pleasure. Well, we've come to the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening. See the show notes on agelesstraveler.com for resources we mentioned in the show and click the free gift button to join our Facebook salon and receive the goodies that will make lifelong travel easy. And don't forget to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You will hear many of our guests, including Judy. Salon members can also ask Judy and our other experts questions to make your travels perfect. And if you love theater, you'll love our next episode when we talk with a playwright who writes for your grandchildren and hear words of wisdom from an 80-year-old grandma who travels the world with her grandchildren. This is Adrian Berg for The Ageless Traveler, here to make sure you never stop traveling.